Greetings gamers and welcome to The Handy Gamer. I'm Raz, The Handy Gamer, and I'm finally doing a video that isn't an unboxing, and I'm very happy about that. So what am I talking about this time? Well, actually, I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite pieces of software that is gaming related and helps me out a lot. But before we get started, I'd like to thank you for checking out this video. Maybe leave a like if you enjoy it. Maybe leave a comment to let me know why you enjoyed it. And if you want to keep up with us, click that subscribe button. And if you want to uh, get notified when we release a new video, click that bell icon. All right, let's get started with the video. So what is this magical new software that I'm talking about? It's actually just GOG Galaxy. You may even be using it right now. But it's more about a certain feature within it than the software itself. If you're anything like me, you might have a huge Steam library. Or perhaps a Epic Game Store library? GOG? EA Origins? Or maybe you're one of those people. You know who I'm talking about. You play. Yeah. You know you're out there somewhere. For some reason. Regardless, it's hard to keep track of everything with so many services out today. How do you know which games you already got on a certain system without having to go through all of them? And there is a lot of them. But along comes GOG Galaxy with a feature that fixes everything. Now you may be saying to yourself, but Raz, it's not that difficult just to start up these software and see what games you have on each one. This isn't like a huge revolutionary thing. Ah, but there is a small caveat to that. What about non-PC libraries? What if it's a console library? See, I'm not just a PC gamer, I'm also a console gamer. I have Nintendos and Playstations and Xboxes, and what do you do when you buy games digitally on those systems? Or maybe it's one of the games that you got for free through these systems uh, subscription services. Like, for example, all the games you've amassed over the years by having a Playstation Plus subscription or an Xbox Live Gold subscription. That makes for a lot of games to keep track of. Well, that's what's so awesome about this feature. It allows you to connect to all these platforms and services and see what games you have. But I'm not just going to talk about it. Let's actually check out the software. So this is what the GOG Galaxy app looks like. Uh, like I said before, this may be a, a software that you use regularly, so you, you're probably not new to this. And if you are, I think I'll give you a very quick overview over what exactly GOG Galaxy is, just in case you're new. So GOG.com is a storefront, much like Steam or Epic uh, Game Store. Uh, they are visible through a normal browser, which is where most of the shopping is done. But the app itself, GOG Galaxy, is an added functionality in that it manages your games. So for example, if you've purchased a game, you would go into this app to install it onto your computer and this app would also up keep that uh, uh, game updated with the latest patches and updates and so on. Once you do make a connection to these platforms, what you essentially have is a cross-platform uh, game library list. Uh, which essentially puts all of your purchased and even subscription uh, available games in one place so that you can have an overview. You can even have extra information, which I'll get into a little bit later. So I'm going to show you how to set up one of these on your own, uh, and you'll also see the ones that I've already set up. So to get started, we're going to go in here under the cog for the settings, and we're going to go to settings. Now the first tab here on the left is uh, called integrations and that's the place where you want to be. Now normally when you come in here you'd only see the official integrations. That's GOG.com, Epic Game Store and Xbox Live. Now these are officially supported by GOG. They, they come with this software out of the box. You don't need to do anything. They are pre-installed. However, they're not connected to anything so you do have to connect accounts uh, to them. But if you want to have connections to other services and other platforms, that's where the bottom part comes in. 
and this is what it looks like. So you'll notice that it says community integrations. Now it says that because these integrations are not officially supported by GOG. GOG themselves did not make these. It's the community that helps them by making these integrations available to other users through a developer's repository called GitHub. Now, if you have a certain platform that you want to connect to, try searching it here and see if it pops up. As you can see, I've already installed certain ones. Uh, I have, for example, Humble Bundle here, which I only installed for testing purposes. I'm not really a Humble Bundle user, but I do have a, uh, an account that I just recently created and connected to a very old purchase I made like five years ago. So hopefully once this is connected, you'll be able to see that game and you'll see what it looks like. I also want to take a second to point out that while it says that I have a PlayStation Network connection here, there is a small caveat to that. Uh, and that is that PlayStation 5 games don't seem to be supported yet. PlayStation 4 games are supported, but I've noticed that uh, PlayStation 5 games that I've recently played, and heck, I've even platinumed a couple of them, don't even show up in the recent played games up here anywhere. I, for example, I recently played and platinumed uh, Ratchet & Clank uh, Rift Apart. And that game was, game was super fun, and I platinumed it, but it does not show up here. And the same goes for uh, Spider-Man Miles Morales. That hasn't shown up either. So I don't think PlayStation 5 games are supported yet. This might be an upgrade that comes later, but right now it's only PlayStation 4 games. Also, I did check, and just so I can show you, there is currently no Nintendo integration. So if you have games that you've purchased through the Nintendo Game Store, uh, that's not currently available. But who knows, at some point in the future, they might add that feature as well. So let's try to make a new connection. Now, we already see uh, you play Steam, PlayStation Network Origin, things that I've connected before, but what does it look like when I connect something new, like Humble Bundle? Well, uh, let's go through it. Now, I, I will mention before we get started that the way they connect is a little bit different for each one. For example, if you have Steam, you might have two-factor authentication. Maybe you get a text message on your phone with a code, maybe you get a link to click in an email, or maybe you have the Steam Guard app on your phone where you need to approve the connection. Whatever it is, you'll have to go through that. There's no way around that. It's obviously for security purposes. So but let's do this humble bundle connection real quick. We click connect and it gets started. And then this little thing pops up that asks you for your permission to uh, get access to these things. You can either decline or accept like this. And when you do that, you start to type in your user details like I will do right now. And then we keep moving. And also it sent me a code to my email, which I will go and retrieve right now. There we go, and now we verify. And so it connects, and then this little thing pops up. Now, I haven't seen one of these on any of the other connections, but it's nice to know that uh, each connection can function a little bit differently. So in this case, it's just asking you what kind of games for, that you from your um, uh, Humble Bundle library that you want to present in uh, GOG Galaxy. In this case, it's DRM-free games and keys that you've purchased, which is exactly what I want to show. So that's all fine. There's no other things that I would need to change here. There's no uh, save button or anything. You just close this little thing. And then we should be done. Now, if I close this, now if we take a look, you'll see that over here, Humble Bundle has appeared in the left menu. It wasn't there before. These are added automatically. You don't need to save any of these filtered lists. So if I click here, yep, that's the game I bought like five years ago, and it's automatically retrieved once I made the connection and listed here, just like all the other ones. Since Humble Bundle was already installed, I want to show you really quick what it looks like when you add a new uh, integration into this system. So essentially, you just click this search thing and you search for something that you want to connect to. Now, I did a little bit of research beforehand and found out that Guild Wars, despite the fact that I've already added manually uh, Guild Wars to the installed games list here, I want to do a, like a, a real official connection to it. So I went ahead here and I clicked uh, and I typed Guild Wars and it shows up. It's available. It's not installed and it's not connected, but it is available. So when I connect to it, it will officially start it up just like we saw with the Humble Bundle. It'll ask me for permissions and I'll accept. 
And then I get to type in all the different little things that I need to do in order to get started with Guild Wars. One of the big reasons why I like doing that, this whole connection to uh, all my libraries in this place is because GOG Galaxy actually has a really good uh, list system. They have a really good uh, presentation and customization of the list so that you can get a really, really good overview. If we take a quick look over here, you'll see you have owned games, installed, and subscriptions. The difference between owned games and, subs and subscriptions is kind of obvious. Subscriptions is more things like, uh, uh, I guess, Xbox Game Pass, for example. Yes, this does connect to Xbox Game Pass, so you can see which games you have available there. Uh, and owned games are essentially games that you've purchased or games that you've received from like Xbox uh, Live Gold, because uh, you might not be aware of this, Games that you get with PlayStation Plus, for example, are not really yours. They're yours as long as you are subscribed to PlayStation Plus. But on Xbox Live Gold, you actually get to keep those games even if you'd cancel your uh, Xbox uh, Live Gold subscription, which is a little bit different between these two uh, platforms. Uh, so in the Owned tab, you might see games that you've gotten from uh, Xbox Live Gold, but you might not see games that you got from PlayStation Plus. Like I said earlier, you can also customize these lists to uh, make them appear however you like. There's actually two types of lists. If you click up here, you'll see that you can either have a grid or a list. The list pretty much looks like this. Uh, you can add more tabs to it with more information, which is all neat. But personally, I think this looks just a little bit too bland for me. I prefer the grid and it can look like this. Now you can also change the size of these tiles and uh, you can either make them smaller to show uh, more games, or you can make them bigger to get a better view of the artwork. Personally, I like it somewhere in the middle because I like to see both the artwork and as many games as I can. Normally, you might not see, for example, the name of the game under the artwork or which platform it's on, but that's something that I activated by going into custom grid view and checking these boxes down here. Uh, title is the title of the game. Rating is your personal rating of the game, because you can actually rate each one of these games individually with stars one to five. So if you click this, you'll see those stars to see what you rated that game. Personally, I don't have much of a use for this because I don't really see a point in going in and rating each game manually. It's not like it goes out to anybody. It's really just for my own personal view. So there's no real point. Status shows you uh, whether you've installed the game. So for example, if you take a look here under a Plague Tale Innocence, there's a little uh, computer icon and a play icon. That means that this game is installed on this system. So uh, that's, that's the only thing that uh, status means. Besides uh, sorting, however you like, according to all of these, uh, one thing that I really like is grouping. So right now there's no grouping at all, but if I wanted to, I could, for example, group games according to, well, take a look at the first one, critical rating. This is really, really cool to me because uh, sometimes you're like, oh, I don't know what I should play. And you just want to go for whatever you can be sure will entertain you. And that's usually the games that are highly rated. So if you do this, you can get an overview of the highest rated games in your list. And then you can be like, oh, well, everyone seems to love Undertale. Uh, I never played it. Let's play that. You know, that's, that's a really cool feature. So I like the grouping feature a lot. So this flexibility is the reason why I'm such a big fan of putting my entire game library here, is that I can make it look however I want, I can sort it and group it however I want. It gives me a great overview over what I actually have access to. So next time there's a big Steam sale or Epic Games Store uh, sale and you see a game that you're interested in but uh, and the price looks pretty good to you and you're like considering buying it, uh, to me at least, that it, what has happened before is that I find something that I'm interested in and end up buying it only to find out later that I perhaps had that game available to me already through one of the subscription services or on one of the consoles, whatever it is, and I kind of made the mistake of buying the game. Uh, with this, that's probably never going to happen, which is why I love this service. Plus, like I said so many times, I love the overview aspect. It makes things so practical. And that's it. If you found this useful, consider leaving a like and a comment down below letting me know how you're using this feature. And again, thanks for checking us out. The, that really means a lot to me. And uh, if you want to stay up to date with us, consider subscribing to the channel. And if you want to be notified when we release new videos, click that little bell icon as well. Anyway, thanks again. See you next time.